If you're like most of my students up here in Canada, then you're off for summer, which is an awesome time to not do math. However, it's also a pretty good time to do just a little bit of math, to do some math that isn't what you might be doing in your actual courses to level up your math skill. And so in this video, I'm gonna share a few projects that you can do over the course of the summer or just a little portion of it to really increase your math skills. Now, the first idea is maybe a little tangential to math. It is programming. I want you to become an excellent programmer because in mathematics, we use programming all the time, both in the actual mathematics and in many applications. And building up the skill of programming is going to be helpful. Now, if you have a lot of experience programming, my suggestion is to take something in mathematics that you've already learned or that you would like to learn and try to actually implement it in some programs. I remember my very first summer off, it was kind of silly, but I remember programming a calculator that would do a lot of linear algebra, Gaussian elimination and that kind of thing. Now, there's many tools that can do that online, but the process of actually implementing it and programming it in really, really helps solidify both my programming skills, but also my understanding of the mathematics involved. If you've never programmed before, that's totally okay. This is a great time to get started. Perhaps the best place to start is with learning Python, but there's many different options. And for example, if you're a bit more statistical minded, you want to do something for sort of statistics, you could learn the language R, or another option is if your school has access to one of the major math suites like Maple or Mathematica or MATLAB, gaining familiarity with those will also really be useful in your mathematics career. Okay, so that's the first idea. Level up your programming skills and if you can, apply that to mathematics. Second idea is kind of related but quite different and that is the idea of LaTeX. LaTeX is the way that mathematicians write and display mathematics. And you have really cool, interesting formulas like these. How are they created? Well, the answer is with LaTeX, which is a markup language. You type in this language, it's really not so bad, and it converts it into this beautiful mathematics. So if you want to learn how to do LaTeX, I actually have an entire video introducing the big ideas of LaTeX, so you can check that out again down in the description. This is going to be really useful for anyone that wants to write higher level math homework assignments or going towards a thesis or writing a paper in the field of mathematics. It's the standard way that we do it. So a really good thing to just learn when you've got a little bit of free time. For the third idea, let's actually get into mathematics. My challenge for you is a modeling project. So what is mathematical modeling? Well, the idea is not just to learn a specific mathematical technique. It's to take an actual problem, something in the real world, something you find interesting. It could be just something in your general life around you, like traffic or queues at coffee shops. It can really be anything. But to try and model that mathematically. Modeling means describing what your assumptions are and defining the problem and coming up with appropriate mathematics for it. And really the reason for this is that we're often in classes go sort of backwards. I tell you a technique and then maybe I give you an application. What I want you to do over the summer is to find some application in the real world that you think is interesting and go in reverse. Think about what mathematics might be relevant for that problem. Be focused on the problem first, that is, and not on the mathematics. The mathematics is gonna come later. And this mathematical modeling approach is really good, particularly if you have any interest in going into applied mathematics or any field that might apply mathematics in it. Mathematical modeling projects can be about just about anything. There's so many cool different ideas. And if you have one, I'd encourage you to leave a comment about that and let us all know what you're working on. All right, fourth idea, I want you to learn a new math subject that you haven't been taught in your classes. And there's many different subjects here. Couple ideas. Uh, first, if you don't have a lot of experience with proofs, for example, if you've taken lots of calculus courses, you might not yet have had a course that takes proofs. I think learning how to prove things is an incredibly important foundation in mathematics. I have one playlist, you can check that out down in the description, which is an introduction to discrete math, which is sort of the logic and foundations and ways to prove in mathematics. My second suggestion for you, which is a really cool one that anyone can do at pretty much any level of mathematical sophistication is game theory. This is not taught enough in university courses. It's such a cool field with so many different applications. And I'm actually gonna be coming out with a series on game theory over this summer. So you can subscribe if you want to check out that one. This is gonna sound like all plugs, but the third one actually isn't. 
The third one is for students who are a little higher up in mathematics. They've already seen analysis, linear algebra, group theory. And if you're one of those students where you've seen a lot of a bit more sophisticated mathematics, my suggestion is to learn a bit about category theory. Now, I actually don't have any videos on this one, but I'll, I'll put some references down in the description. Category theory is really cool at being able to see a bunch of different types of sophisticated mathematics within sort of one larger framework and be able to sort of understand things at, at sort of one level step back in, in abstraction. And so I really encourage you to learn category theory. All right, so whatever it is, it doesn't have to be one of those three. I want you to learn a new mathematical topic. Fifth idea. Fifth idea is I want you to read a book, a, a math book that isn't a textbook. For example, uh, I have this one I really enjoy, Infinite Powers by Stephen Strogetz. This was one I found that really opened my mind to new ways of thinking specifically about calculus. And if you're a calculus student or a calculus teacher or someone who might take calculus, anyone who has any relation to calculus, I'd suggest that book. And I'll put some more down in the description. The idea here is that we should be able to enjoy and read mathematics. And so having the experience of reading a book that isn't just trying to teach us high level mathematics, it's just trying to tell us an interesting story that inspires and motivates us. I think that's a really important thing to do. The next project I have for you is to read some actual published math papers. That is, you might often have been reading math textbooks that your instructors provided for you, and those are great for learning subjects. But it's really nice to develop the skill of being able to read actual math papers. The standard location for this is the archive or archive.org, and this is where people will publish their actual papers. This is not its sort of final product, like after it's being peer reviewed and put into a specific journal, but nevertheless, this is where you can find an enormous amount of mathematical papers. So you can come to the search bar and just search for any topics that you might be interested in. So for example, one that I saw just the other day that I thought was kind of cool, I'm gonna type in coupled contagion. I'm gonna come down here and click the PDF for this article. And what do you get? you get a math paper. This is a, a genuine piece of mathematics that people are tried to present. It's a kind of a cool idea that you have if you sort of skim down. It's all about the idea of there being a pandemic like we're in right now, but as well as the fear of the pandemic, there's fear of vaccines that exist in the population and the relationship between the fear of the pandemic and the fear of the vaccines and, and how you can go and shake it out. And anyways, you could go and check out if you so wished this one particular paper that's sort of exploring some of the mathematics of that particular relationship. But, but you don't need to choose this one, you just choose anything that you might be interested in because the real goal is to develop the skill of reading mathematical papers. And my final idea here is to make a math YouTube video. I know personally that I have learned so much about mathematics from making math videos. The whole process of learning a subject deeply enough that I can make an interesting and compelling story that explains things well, that keeps people interested. This really changes my perspective on mathematics. And so I would encourage you to take your hand at making a math video. On that vein, I'll put down in the description a link to a Discord, which is run by 3Blue1Brown, an amazing and probably the largest of the math YouTubers. And he's got a summer of math exposition. So if you want to be part of a community of people who are working on making math videos and being able to expose math in different ways, then you can check out that as well. That should be plenty for everyone to do over the course of the summer. All right, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like for the YouTube algorithm. If you have any thoughts or questions or cool ideas of your own, leave them down in the comments below and we'll do some more math in the next video.